We've got these tariffs apparently coming, not much impact on the market. Dow is down, what, 116 points, but the S&P up 16, Nasdaq up 80 points. David Barnson with me this morning. Why no serious reaction to these, this tariff pr proposal? I think you have a president-elect who has told us time and time again he uses these as a negotiating tactic, and I think the market believes it's a negotiating tactic, and with Canada and Mexico, I think they believe it's going to be an effective one. I don't think there will ever be a tariff imposed, because I think Canada and Mexico are now going to go give the president a cosmetic victory, go get some reinforcements, get some more support, and help with the border closing that then enables him to say, okay, they're, they're not uh, continuing what they were doing in the Biden administration, which was no help at all. That's it's interesting, but there is a risk here of protectionism. Uh, we, we impose tariffs on them, they impose tariffs on us. Everybody joins in. Well, like protect, Smoot -Hawley all but over see, again. protectionism and Smoot Hawley are a disaster. I am a free trader. But in this case, I will point out, he said his reason for the Canada Mexico deal was border security, fentanyl, crime, not just the whole old thing about I'm trying to protect American manufacturing jobs. That's protectionism. The China thing still lingers. That, again, is going to be a more complicated process. The incoming Treasury Secretary Scott Besant, he says these tariffs are not inflationary, they're just a one-time price adjustment. That's not inflation. What do you say to that, David? Uh, one-time price adjustment is inflationary. Uh, uh, Scott Besson uh, has written before about how they're inflationary to some degree. But again, it's not inflationary if they don't happen. So this is a, a moving target. And markets are going to end up suffering volatility at some point. Right now, they haven't really believed it. But there will be some up and down movement. But of course, anything that raises prices on importers yeah. is inflationary. But it's a one-time deal. You put 10% well, on this, it goes up 10% or whatever. But that's not whatever, how we define inflation. Uh, when you have one-time increases that stay... You're being technical. No, I'm just talking about what the definition of a price increase is. Okay. If, it go, if it happens one time and stays, then most people consider that inflationary. Ask Biden and Harris if they liked the uh, one-time movements in 2021 and 22. It stopped going up year over year but it was still much more expensive for groceries. I'm hoping it doesn't get to that store. Just one of the early disagreements for the next hour, right? Uh, there's many more coming. Uh, absolutely there is. <laughs> Good to see you, David. Stay there. Home prices are up 4.6% over the last 12 months. That's less than expected, and it's the smallest rise in prices since September of last year. What do you got to say? I just love so much that we're finally in our country celebrating home prices not going up. The cult from the first part of the 2000s where we thought it was a great thing and it led to the financial crisis. And right now everyone's saying, gosh, we wish home prices would quit going up so much. And this yeah. is a great thing. It's distorted prices immensely. Times change. Amgen, they've, they've got this drug trial. They got a 20% weight loss in one year amongst the people who used it. Why are they down? That's a great question. They just <laughs> must have been missing expectations. Let me just break away to David for a second. Do you, you hold Amgen, don't you? We do. We've Wait, been investors for a long time. Yeah. We're, we're hugely so up what's on up it. With it. And again, they were hoping for 20 to 25 percent weight loss. It came in at 20 percent. I think that this is an overreaction. There's still a lot more research coming through, but I think this is what happens when markets get ahead of themselves on an expectation. David is still with us, itching to get into this, but you're going to go ahead with your stock picks, your dividend picks. Lamar Advertising. Lamar Advertising is also motivated by profit, and that's what Amazon's doing. That's got everyone so upset. So yeah. I don't know what to say now. I'm really <laughs> torn. Flustered. <laughs> the Not pursuit quite. of profits. I'm thankful uh, this Thanksgiving for profit. Yeah. Lamar Advertising has a lot of them, making a lot of money, and uh, there's going to be a lot more money spent on marketing and advertising next year. You have a good economy, and Lamar is the number one billboard maker throughout the country. <laughs> uh, we converted a ton to digital. We love this model, big, juicy 5% dividend with a special dividend yield coming. Okay. Uh, you've been here before. Merck, love them. Owned it forever, and uh, it's down uh, about 13% in the last quarter. And we think that this is uh, the Kachuda, their leader, it c continues to get new applications. You got a dividend, 3.5% that they grow every year. Just raised the dividend 7% last week. So are there problems at Merck? Well, management answered that. They're raising the dividend. The dividend is management's vote of confidence in their own business model. A music to your ears, I'm yes, sure. I oh, got it. Thank you, David. Trump's Treasury pick, Scott Besant, he wants to raise oil output 3 million barrels a day. That's oil. How long does it take to do that? 
I think we have to remember that our country doesn't, uh, the government doesn't produce the oil. They get in the way of production. They need to approve certain permits and things like that. But you also have oil companies that have to make economic decisions. And there's this thing called capital discipline where they don't want to do what they've done before, overproduce, and then end up having to get rid of a bunch of low prices. I think that three million is aggressive. But if you have a good growing economy, keep in mind, global demand has been low because China's economy has been so weak. Sure. Uh, a lot of this is that we have to have the capacity to produce another three million barrels. Let the oil production companies make their own decision. Thank you, David. And David, thanks very much for joining us for the hour and refraining from interjecting in some of the interviews. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's you too. <laughs>